The research article discussed here is called Unusual Childhood Waking as a Possible Precursor of the 1995 Kobe Earthquake. It was written by Ikea and Whitehead in 2013, published in the journal Animals. The Kobe earthquake of 1995 was a 7.3 magnitude earthquake that occurred just outside Kobe, Japan. It occurred at 5.47 a.m. on January 17th. The depth was 16 kilometers, and the surface length of the actual earthquake was 9 kilometers. In this discussion, I'm going to briefly overview precursors, including animal precursors, and just generally what an earthquake precursor is. And that's to give you an idea of why the study was done. And next, I'm going to present the data, the results, and the conclusions. Before an earthquake, there is a chain reaction of events that occur. And this is a result of the stress that's building on the crust of the Earth. This leads to a whole variety of effects that have been documented, such as changes in the groundwater, electric changes, magnetic changes, changes in the ionosphere above the atmosphere, in the total electron count, atmospheric changes such as temperature, pressure, and more. And these create some unusual effects such as earthquake clouds, unusual looking clouds that might appear, or earthquake lights, and they can also induce strange behavior in animals. For instance, in Japan, there has long been folklore about abnormal catfish behavior. Or in China, there have been records of snakes emerging before earthquakes. Even in the freezing cold, when leaving underground would be deadly. In Italy, frogs have been recorded leaving their mating grounds during mating season at the pond. And this would be presumably due to the changes in the water before the earthquake. And despite the drive to stay at the pond at that time, they have still been reported leaving those grounds. In New Zealand, there were very many verbal reports of all sorts of unusual animal effects. And really all over the world, there have been reports of unusual animal behavior before earthquakes. Their research question was, do humans also behave in an earthquake-sensitive way? And the way that they chose to measure this was through early waking before an earthquake. They surveyed children from 8 to 11 years old about their waking, and they wanted to know if the children woke up a minute before the earthquake or more than a minute before the earthquake. And the distinction here is that if you woke up more than a minute before the earthquake, it ensures that you didn't wake up due to the earthquake itself. So the goal of this study is to assess whether children are earthquake sensitive, measured by whether or not they wake up early that night of the earthquake, the earthquake was at 5 late in the morning. And the precursors they believe are most likely to wake the children would be ultra-low frequency or very low frequencies, which are known to be emitted soon before earthquakes, and they also are known to cause itchy and anxious behavior. So it wouldn't be surprising if a young child woke up early before an earthquake due to anxiety or whatnot. But keep in mind, there are a whole variety of other precursors that could wake children. The children were surveyed on this regard, and that is what the data will reflect. 
they will also reflect the distance they were from the earthquake epicenter. I should correct and say some of the sample was from the children after this earthquake, but they also collected data about a decade later when a lot of these children were in college. In column one, we see the city. Notice that Kobe is not exactly at the epicenter here because in column two, we see distance from the epicenter. And each city is a city that was represented and it's listed by its distance from the epicenter. In column two, we see the ratio of children that woke up greater than one minute before the earthquake for each city. And in column four, we see the ratio of how many woke up less than a minute before the earthquake by city. And notice a decline in the rate of waking up in both of these columns. Figure one and figure two are going to look identical. The only difference is the group that we are looking at. Figure one will represent the children that woke up less than a minute before the earthquake, and figure two will represent the group that woke up greater than a minute before the earthquake. And note that only 15% actually woke up before the earthquake. The 15% is referring to the precursor locations, not the people on the periphery. So when we draw conclusions about the sensitivity of children, note that there is only a small percentage of children that are earthquake sensitive, at least in terms of sensitivity measured by waking up before an earthquake. Also note that a certain number of children would have woken up regardless. That's why it's so important to compare across distance. In figure one, we see the children that woke up less than a minute before the earthquake. On the x-axis, we see the kilometers from the epicenter. And on the y-axis, we see the fraction of children that woke up. We can see here that the number of children that woke up less than a minute before the earthquake declines with distance away from the epicenter. It's an exponential decline. In figure two, we see again the same pattern that we saw in figure one. And this is for children that woke up greater than a minute before the earthquake. While the data shows an exponential decrease with distance, this actually occurs really slowly. Using a specific statistical mathematical method, researchers calculated that something very strong was affecting the children at least about 100 kilometers across, something that wasn't generated from just a point or a line, which would indicate that there was a precursor effect. In conclusion, results from this study suggest that children are displaying sensitivity to earthquake precursors, which most likely are ULF or ELF, ultra low frequencies and extremely low frequencies emitted before an earthquake. However, keep in mind there are a variety of other precursors that could have caused these effects. And keep in mind that this study is limited because it was a study done in hindsight after the actual earthquake event occurred. So the results should be interpreted with caution.